This is the dowling jig made by Jessam. And these are some add-ons and fixtures and attachments that I've built that make it a little more versatile, a little more useful, and a little quicker to set up. If you have one of these jigs or you're thinking of buying one, stay tuned because you're not going to want to miss some of the additional features that these add-ons give you. I have no affiliation with the company and real money was spent on this tool. It's been in my toolbox for about five months and I found myself reaching for it on almost every project I work on. It's easy, it's accurate, it's quick, and honestly, the results speak for themselves. But with that being said, I think there are a couple areas that we can improve on. In particular, when you're doing repetitive work or working with really small pieces, I think that some additional clamping, some fixtures for positioning will make a, make a big difference in use of this jig. I've attempted to be as concise as I possibly can, but I also didn't want to skip out on any details that you would find important. If you aren't familiar with the Jessam Dowling Jig, I have a link in the description so you could check it out and learn a little bit more about it. Something that I have some difficulty with on occasion is when I'm trying to hold small work pieces like this. Say I'm doing a face frame or I have a tendency to do a lot of slatted furniture. Now it's definitely not too difficult to get the piece clamped on and drill into small work pieces like this. However, there are times where I feel this becomes a little tippy or I'm just fumbling a bit to get it on. But say you have 20, 30, 40 of these to drill because you're doing a big face frame. It can get a little tedious. I made a set of stops or additional fences for small work pieces. They consist of two pieces of plywood that measure an inch and seven eighths by four inches. They have a through hole all the way through along with the groove on the other side that takes a T-bolt. When inserted, it sits below the top of the surface and also stops it from turning. It utilizes these two holes in the fence for installation. Essentially, you put your stuff on, toss your bolt through, a washer, and a nut. I'm using these butterfly nuts for now, but I have a couple star knobs on order. All the hardware I use is quarter 20, as that seems to fit in these holes very nicely. First, I move my fence back so that my work piece actually is just in the middle of the dowel holes. Then I line the work piece up with the position that I want it. If you can see there, if you can see there, I will be able to fit two dowels into this workpiece. Once I have my left and right position set, I loosen one of the thumb screws, slide the fence over, and re-tighten. Then I go to the other side and bring that in snug as well. You can take your workpiece, slide your dowel jig on it, clamp it, drill the two holes you need to drill, I then take a pencil and mark the center location or the center line spot on the back of the workpiece. Take it off, grab your next workpiece, and repeat. You might be asking why we've marked the center line on this workpiece. The reason is so that we can line this up with the rest of our assembly properly. With that center line, we can then take a square and continue that line to the edge of our workpiece. Then, if we're working on a face frame, we can lay those out, mark our center line onto our other board, whether it's the rail or style and then use that center line to align with our dowel jig to drill the mating holes. The next jig I made helps with clamping our doweling jig to small work pieces quicker and more efficiently. Don't get me wrong, I love how large this jig is. I love being able to use clamps on the fence, on the face. I love that I can take this apart and place this directly on work pieces to drill different dowel locations. However, sometimes, again, usually when we're doing a bunch of production work, drilling tons of holes and similar pieces over and over, it'd be nice to have a quicker clamping method. For example, the method the Dowel Max uses is very quick, I think, as in comparison to using a third-party clamp.
This is basically all there is to the jig. Again, we're using the fence holes, tossing this in with a couple of thumb screws or star knobs would work much better. And now we have the ability to much more quickly clamp our workpiece and our dowling jig together. We can take it one step further and combine our stops with this jig. By putting our groove through the locking screw and then having a second hole for this bolt, we can now use both the jigs we made in conjunction with, the, with each other. We have our small workpiece. We know we have to drill a bunch of them. We get our jig lined up in the right position. Clamp it down. Then, we push our stops in to the right location tight up against our workpiece. Now, we simply loosen and reinstall. Now the beauty of this setup is it's so easy to make. It's literally a piece of wood with a couple holes drilled in it and you have clamping for small work pieces. However, if you want to have that clamping ability for long work pieces where you slide in the, the dowling jig along it, this won't work. The widest piece you can fit is essentially the distance between the screws, which is about four and a half inches. So, that's where this comes into play. Now this one is a little more complicated to make, but it will allow you to work on long work pieces. This jig, connects to the holes in the top and not to the fence. Originally when I made it, I'd use some threaded inserts onto the top of this piece of maple, but I found that this just flexed way too much. Through bolts are the way to go. Not quite as good looking, but they get the job done. Now, loosen, slide, tighten. The system will also work on small work pieces as well. The beauty of having a full clamping bar is that these screws don't need to go right into the back of that. So you can clamp it literally anywhere along here. And it will still clamp down. No problem. If you like, this option is also compatible with the stops you made. Since the stops will mount to our fence, and since they're thinner than the thickest piece of stock we plan to work with, they won't get in the way. So now it's the same as before. Line up our workpiece. Clamp it in place. Set our stops. And you're off to the races.
The downside to this setup is that you can only clamp wood as thick as three quarters of an inch material, assuming you want to put the dowels in the center. If you set the fence to three eighths, which is where you'd want it on a three quarter inch piece of material, you can just fit a three quarter inch board in between here. I have an idea where I want to use a piece of angle iron on the back of here and tap the threads directly into the metal in order to increase that clamping capacity. Once I have that figured out, and if it works, I'll make a video and let you guys know. I'm going to quickly go through how this is put together and the parts you need. Again, all the hardware is quarter inch 20 because it fits into the holes on the Justin Dowling jig easily. My two boards are about 8 inches by inch and a half by 3 quarters thick. We start with our handle. Essentially, I cut a circle out with a hole saw, got a carriage bolt, a washer, and a nut. You're going to push your carriage bolt deep into the softwood and then tighten up this nut against it. That's going to lock this assembly together and turn it into a knob. Our backboard has a large counter bore and inside I have a quarter inch 20 threaded insert. I did try using a T-nut originally but it just kept popping out and this worked better. You can screw your handle assembly into the threaded insert. Now for our fence assembly. Again, very similarly, we have a large counter bore that will allow our washer to fit. And this hole is actually drilled larger than our quarter inch 20 by a bit. We want this to be able to slide on and off this without any resistance. The order of assembly is going to go as follows. First, we're going to install a nylon lock nut. It wouldn't be a bad idea to add a little bit of thread locker onto the whole situation. The reason that counter bore is there is to allow this nut to recess into that piece of wood so that these two can get as tight as possible. We're going to follow it up with a large fender washer. And then we can attach our front clamping board. We'll toss a small washer in between and then finish it up with another nylon lock nut. You want this lock nut to be installed as little as possible, but so that it's fully engaged on all the threads. I have the bolt just starting to come through the nut. Now, once the nylon is installed in the front, we're going to come behind and we're actually going to loosen up the rear lock nut. We want this mechanism to spin freely in here. Tighten it slowly until you have resistance and then back it off a sixteenth to an eighth of a turn. Do the same on both sides. Now that both of these can spin freely inside of this board, the lock nuts keep this board positioned at the front. You want to make sure that when looking from above and applying pressure this way as in when it would be clamped, there is no part of the nut sticking past this or it will mar your workpiece. Other than that, just a matter of drilling a couple of holes that align with the holes on the dowling jig and lock it into place. 
I do suggest using through bolts for this as when I put threaded inserts into this, it was causing it to just rack way too much. And that's all for this video. I had a few more tips and tricks that I'll save for another one because this was just getting a bit too long. And if you enjoyed what you watched, please subscribe. Thank you.